In this video we're going to take a look at a concept called lemmatization and this is a concept that's borrowed from kind of like linguistics I would say um, and we're going to unpack what this means in the, con in the course of this short video. So first of all uh, I'm going to grab some text from the BBC. This is just again as, as per the, the last videos we're just going to get some random text from a random article. I think we'll go for this Christmas star planet set to a line in the night sky. So a good story for us to analyse linguistically. So let's copy the first few paragraphs of that text and again we'll set a text attribute. And that'll be it. And then we can analyse the text. Again we might want to perform removal of new line characters. So we're going to replace the new line operator with just a space and then we can strip any spaces that are left off. Um, so let's have a look at that. Um, yep, so we've got um, a representation here of the text. So now what I want to do is um, load this text into a spacing model. Um, so we'll use the English language, uh, the small English language model from spacing. Um, we'll create an NLP object here and it's equal to spacy.load um, I think it's this. Let's see if that works. Oh, need to import spacey first. Once that's done, uh, in core web small. That's it there. Sorry. Right. So we do. We have a, a spacey NLP object. That's um, an example of a language model that's been loaded in. And what we can do then is pass the language model um, or text to create a document. So to the NLP constructor, we pass in the text that we got from BBC. Now, here we are. Um, we're going to now look at something called lemmatization. So I'm going to iterate over the... Uh, let's, let's take a look at the first token in the document. Um, and we see that it's Jupiter. And if you look at the type, we see it's a spacey token object. So I'm going to jump over to the spacey documentation. And here are all the attributes that exist on spacey token objects. And we have a lot. We've seen a couple of these uh, before. Uh, we've seen, I believe, the uh, is punct for punctuation. You've also got things like is space, is it a white space character? Is it a lowercase? Is it an uppercase? Is it a digit? There are actually quite a lot of these attributes. Um, and I think they're worth looking into if you're working with tokens, um, which you always are in, in the co uh, context of NLP. Um, for our purposes, what we're looking for is a, a attribute called lemma. So if we look at this attribute here and the definition of this, what, what, what does the lemma attribute return? It returns the base form of the token with no inflectional suffi suffixes. So that's quite a verbose sentence I would say so uh, what we need to do is unpack that a little bit. Um, if we look up the definition here of inflectional suffi suffixes which um, is a word I'm struggling to say here in my Scottish accent it says here inflectional suffixes do not change the meaning of the original word so if it, it gives you an example here with two sentences every day I walk to school and yesterday I walked to school so the words walk and walk, they have the same meaning. They, they are the same, they have the same sort of contextual meaning here. Well, not contextual, they have the same meaning. The context or the tense changes depending on uh, the language being used in the sentence. So the word car, here's another example. Um, the pluralization of car is cars. It's the same word for the intents and purposes of a machine learning algorithm or text analytics service these should usually be treated as the same word so that's the concept of lemmatization the wikipedia definition just to hammer that home um, a more formal definition the process of grouping together the inflected forms of a word so that they can be analyzed as a single item and that's called the words lemma or the words dictionary form so what we could do is look at the lemmatized version of this document. So the raw document has all the text here that we, we want to keep. 
or that we have. So what we want to keep is the lemma. Lemmas. Let's say lemmas. We'll make it an empty list, and we'll iterate over each token in the document. And we can say if the token, um, or sorry, we can we can append to lemmas the token dot lemma. Okay. Um. Yeah. So what I'm actually going to do, I think we should maybe remove punctuation, um, like we did in the last video. So if token if not token dot is punct so if it's not punctuation we're going to append the token uh, to the lemmas list lemmas dot append token dot lemma so let's run that and now after that processes that text we should have a lemmas um, document now you see here it's actually appended a bunch of uh, sort of hash, well it's, it's a long string of numbers essentially. We can change that by appending an underscore to the lemma. And then when we look at it we actually get the lemmatized word um, instead. So um, there is a difference, the lemma, the raw lemma will return something that um, exists, it's like the ID that maps um, to the, uh, the word. Um, and that's used in spacey in something called the string store which we'll come back to in a different video. For now, it's it's sufficient to know that when you're wanting the actual textual version of the lemma, we use lemma with an underscore, and you can see in the documentation that that does exist here. Lemma with an underscore, and that returns a, a Unicode character, or a Unicode string, uh, whereas the other one returns an int. So we want the the one with the underscore here. So we look at the if we join this up now. Um, into a string, we can see the lemmatized version of the text. And you might be wondering how, how does it differ? Let's let's have a look. Jupiter and Saturn be set to cross path in the night sky appear to the naked eye as a double planet. So that isn't exactly the best English, but it has reduced like for example this word. If we compare the two sentences, if we look at the original set um, the original uh, document, it has changed R to B. Now B is the lemmatization, the lemmatized form of the word R. So the word R, its dictionary form is the word B. Um, and let's see if we can find another example. Appear yeah, to the naked eye as a double planet, the time. So you can see timing, yeah. That, sorry, that just runs on a new line. Um, yeah, so again, is um, has been reduced to be, no, the word known has been reduced to no. So the simplification of these words to their dictionary forms, that's essentially what um, lemmatization does. So I think that will wrap it up for this video. Um, I think before we go, it's worth mentioning that lemmatization is a, usually a very important step if you're doing things like machine learning or information retrieval. If you wanted to search for all documents, um, let's go back to this example. Let's say you had a search engine and you say, I want to find out all documents, um, all web pages that refer to walking. What you want to do is reduce words like walked, walking, walks, reduce all of them down to their, infl uh, their lemmatized form so that the information retrieval system can then go and say, well, this document has the word walking in it. Let's reduce that down to walk and we can return that as a result. Otherwise, if you just looked at the raw words, the search engine or the information retrieval system would only return the documents or the websites that actually have the word walk in it. It wouldn't, re it wouldn't match on words like walked or walking. That's probably not what you want if you're building a search engine, for example. So you would reduce these words down to their lemmatized form. Um, so that's a, as well as machine learning, I think inf information retrieval and even things like recommender systems. These are uh, areas that really benefit from the lemmatization approach to, um, and from lemmat lemmatization as a key step in text pre-processing. Okay, that's all for this video.